splurge account, sanity allowance, pocket money, or fun money, whatever you want to call it, pay yourself first. It will help you save thousands and cut down your spending. Let's talk about it. If we haven't met before, hey, I'm Kelly. I'm the Frugal Fund Mum here in Adelaide, South Australia. I'm just a mum who learned how to budget and be able to save and pay off over $140,000 of our mortgage and debt in under six years. And so we are debt free with mortgage paid. And there are lots of little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way with budgeting and saving money that I share with others. This video is just for pure entertainment purposes. It is not a direct personal advice. And so please take the information and discover for yourself what works and feel free to ask any questions along the way. But I thought that I would share with you this one major tip that really helped us along the way. So first of all, I was the spender in the family, but we were newly married and had a baby and I worked out we wanted to set up the home and you know, you go to the $2 shop and $2 and $2 equals $64 somehow. It's the same with Kmart. And so very quickly worked out, there's a whole lot of gaps in our budget with money leaking out and we had way much months left over after our money and trying trying to figure out how to pay the bills and get the food and the formula and the nappies and everything else, we always seem to be short, literally living paycheck to paycheck. And so something had to go. We were working with a budget and trying to figure all that out, but it was just doing my head in trying to work out exactly where we were. I discovered this book by Anita Bell, Your Money, How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years by the Woman Who Did It in Three. And she is an Australian author and one of the most logical, down to earth, normal, <laughs> you know, people that is there. And as she said, she paid off a mortgage when interest rates were 17%. And I know that at the time I was like, wow, that's absolutely crazy. The way that life is going right now. Hello. But still, so much of her advice is just the most simplest basic concepts way before Barefoot Investor was even here, way before I'd even heard of Dave Ramsey and, you know, whatever principles you want to follow with budgeting, this was the book that set me on the path. In her book, she just has some of the most basic concepts and things that you think, yep, that's probably what my grandma did <laughs> and how to change things and adapt them. And it's really good. One thing that she talked about in there is about food planning and meal prepping and taking your lunch to work, which is all stuff that I know people talk about. But, you know, she's talking about breaking traditional molds of stuff too, because she said when she grew up, it was dessert after dinner every night. And when they sort of got married and they went, well, we don't need the calories and also the cost. So then they cut back that they'd have just one dessert in the week. And she said it saved them calories and also money. And they're just little things to retwig your brain. I know that some people are probably watching this going, Duh, but some people don't know. And so I thought that I would just share with you some of the thoughts that I have around her concept of pay yourself first and how logically you can put it to your advantage. Remember when you were a little kid and you got an allowance or pocket money and it was like the best thing ever? I say to people, treat that as your own money and pay yourself first and you will literally cherish it because if that is the only money that you have to buy the things that you want, you are going to look after that money like it is liquid gold, let me tell you. And I'm going to give a few tips and tricks to help with that. There are so many budgeting things out there with like the 80-20 rule, 50-30-20-10, especially if you belong to a church and you do 10% for tithing or giving charity stuff. And sort of around the 10% was about the number that I had in my head when I was looking at doing the allowance for both myself and hubby, because then what we ended up doing is kind of a backwards budget. And we made sure that all the things that were in the budget were kind of allocated and had something. And then anything outside of that was kind of our responsibility. So the first thing with setting up your budget, you're going to go through all your bank account statements or anything where you've spent money that you have some sort of record and look at what are the things that you have to pay. So are you renting or paying board somewhere? You need to pay that. 
or do you have a mortgage? Then you have to pay your bills, gas, electricity, water, etc., etc. Do you have school fees that you have to pay for? What are the things within your budget that you absolutely have to pay for? Then you move on to the other things that might be in your budget that there are ways to either reduce or maybe even get rid of completely. Phone plans are a really good place to start. There's something that you could look at reducing, changing providers. The same with insurances. I know everyone talks about this. Looking at ways that you can maybe reduce your insurance or moving it to somewhere else. Some people have cars and so you need to be looking at the service fee that you need for that. How much is that per year? How much does it work out per pay packet? Putting that away. What about petrol? What about other wear and tear that you might need to be looking out for? So literally sit down and go through all your spending and also go through your week. What do you do each day? Where do you go? What are the things that you spend money on? And literally write down a massive list and start looking at it. Is it a sort of want or is it a need? And then you can start filtering out from there. In our budget, we allocated what the thing was and who it covered. And we very quickly worked out that what the things were, our needs, very important, did cover all four of us. So after the mortgage and the bills and all of that, we started looking at stuff like clothing. Yes, all four of us will need clothing, the most basic thing. How much on average did we spend last year? Okay, we probably don't need to spend that much this year because we did buy some stuff. But, you know, change of season and children grow and things like that. So we still put in a bit of an allocation that was there. What do we need as far as personal care goes? Soap, soap shampoos, body wash, whatever. We put that into a category as well. And very simply started sorting all of that out. Food, you know, <laughs> anything that all four people in that house need. It all went into the budget and it was all allocated and sorted out there. So after we allocated all of the needs for the family, we started looking at the wants and what are the things that maybe individually people have that doesn't support the house or the whole family. So that's the concept of your sanity money, pocket allowance, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want that doesn't affect or touch or help anybody else, that's your shopping. So the first thing was alcohol. My husband is the only one who drinks in the whole family. And at the time it was maybe a case of beer, if that once a month. And so then he said basically that his sanity allowance would cover that cost because he doesn't really buy anything else. He takes his lunch to work every day and he doesn't really shop. So that's where his money went. So I still put it sort of in an envelope. And if I went to the shops, then I had that money in cash to pay for it. For myself, it was buying maybe a magazine once a month, especially doing the competitions and stuff, sending it in, or if I was grabbing a drink with a friend, or if I was just out and about and I wanted a drink or something different than water, um, then I'd grab it and I'd pay for it out of my money. So they're just all those little things that you have to think about. A few more examples of wants are beauty treatments. Do you like to get a facial or get waxing done or whatever else? If you need it to look presentable for your job or whatever, then probably that's a tax a deduction for you. But if it's just sort of like a personal thing, well, then I'd be looking at paying for it out of your own money. And then also that way you can look at saving up for things. If you like to get your nails done, money, petty, acrylics, whatever it is, that's also something that I'd be looking at. Again, that's a personal thing and probably something you should be saving up for. Could you maybe go without to help save a little bit more as well? So they're just a few different ideas for you to start thinking about. It can take a little while to adapt to it because basically every time you think, oh, I'll buy something, you need to stop and think to yourself, is it a want or is it a need? Because I can tell you, you'll very quickly start working out which is which and kind of where's the money going to come from, which is probably the next thing you need to think about. So you add all of those things up that you think that maybe you want to buy and you'll kind of have a bit of a ballpark figure about how much pocket money you should be having for you. Hubby and I worked out basically that we would want about $50 a fortnight, so it's $25 a week or $100 a month. And then that way, 
it would cover anything that came up. We always found that we had more money than months usually. So we were pretty good because it does really quickly <laughs> make you stop spending when you can go oh, this is all the money that I have and I still have two weeks left. Um, what if something comes up and I can't afford to go or whatever it is? So yeah, you do kind of really pull the reins in a little bit. And also the thing that Anita talks about is that as you get a little bit older and you get to control your shopping or things just aren't important to you anymore, you will start reducing the amount of money that you kind of need as your sanity money as well. And then you can start looking at putting the extra into a savings. So what I used to do when I would get my $50 once a fortnight is I immediately put $25 into a savings. And then I had to live off of $25 for two weeks. And let me tell you, it dramatically made me cut down my spending very quickly. Our money in Australia is very colorful and power of a note. Let me tell you. It's pretty powerful. So to see this sitting in my wallet, it makes me feel rich, absolutely. And so if I have to physically hand this cash over to get something, I'm going to break a note. And let me tell you, I want to see this $50 note in my wallet as long as I can. Because if I have to pay for something and then I get change, it is very quick and easy to just pay with a 10 pay with another 10 and then suddenly you've got less money and you're wondering where all your money went from. The concept I've seen online starts with a whole $20 note. So if you're giving yourself an allowance, try and make it the biggest note as possible because that's the note that you want to see. They say psychologically, it's actually really hard to break a big note um embarrassment or just the fact you don't want to let it go so that's something to think about as well when you're looking at how to put the cash in your wallet i highly suggest also that you do use cash so again you can physically see how much money you have but also it is the psychological thing of handing that money over and then getting change and going oh that's not a lot uh to see that you are shopping and you are spending money so still 20 years later, it is one of the concepts that I have held near and dear to my heart. As I said, it has saved us thousands and really helped me cut down on my spending. We used to have this cute little like $2 store near our house and I was forever in there shopping because, you know, you never need something till you go into the store and see it. And some things we did need like a bath plug or a mat or something like that. But then there was many other things in there that were just a want. And very quickly, it all adds up and you're like where did all my money go? And I know that a lot of people have credit cards and then they balance budget at the end of the month, which is what we kind of do now. But still, it doesn't help in the moment of spending because if you get to the end of the month and you're balancing your budget and you go, oh, we overspent in this area, how much is that going to impact you? It's just one of those little things. So at least having cash on you, once it's gone, that's it. So it does really help you. So yes, this is along the realms of cash stuffing, but you're kind of just looking after one category with it. If you do cash stuffing, let me know. I'd love to hear how you're going with that. We do a lot of digital budgeting, but yeah, our sanity money like that is still cash. So I can physically see it and that makes it really tricky to part with, <laughs> but it works. And it's something that I like to share with people. I hope that this video has helped you. Feel free to leave any comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.